96.3 Easy FM 21 Questions Tonight on 21 Questions uh, Do you know This is a multi-talented individual She came out from Bermuda With a husband Who apparently looks like <laughs> my, you know, my DVD <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> And he's into agriculture They've travelled the world They settled here in uh, Kenya One and a half years ago She is a best-selling author From Bermuda She's also a teacher, and you most probably remember her most and best as the judge who was sitting in the middle. Of course, there was Y. Ray, uh huh. Then Ian, Ian, at the and other then end. The, the one in the middle. Yes, the, the good-looking one. one. Season two was it? Season two? <laughs> season three. Season three. 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 Okay. All right, Sakata. So season three. It is, of course, Joanne Bulber. Just I love it. Welcome to Twenty One Questions. Thank you. So, question one. You know, Davis is still trying to get over the fact that. Uh, you know, your husband looks uh, like a lawyer. Yes, what, he does. <laughs> what do lawyers look like? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure the look. I mean, he's, he's dark. He's, he's uh-huh. dark skin. Uh-huh. He's he's very muscular build. Yeah. Um, he's handsome. Yeah. I don't know. So is it because the the watch? The lures. I don't know. Yeah. I know. I know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, does he look like a watchman? Yeah, is it the watchman who <laughs> throws him and try and touch him or? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Watchmen always approach me trying to talk to him. I didn't say he looked yes. like a lawyer. We've yeah. always been told right. people have come up to us and you, you know, scolded um, right. him for not teaching um, yeah. our kids the yes. mother yes. tongue and everything. Yes. Umundo, umundo. <laughs> so do you know? Hey, do you know? Hey, do you know any? Have you so get, do you know learned any lawyer words at all? No, uh, I I live in Tigoni, one week. No <laughs> lawyer. I like that one. No. Um, <laughs> what about Swahili words? Yeah, Kidogo too. No. Kidogo, Kidogo too. Yeah. All right, uh, so so let's begin. Uh, let's start from the beginning. Um, wh- why and how did you move to Kenya? So um, I think things in life kind of happen with a journey, and each step of the journey leads you in a different place. So we were looking to move. We, uh, we were born and raised in Bermuda, mm. but sometimes Bermuda just feels very small. It's a small island. Everyone knows everyone. So um, we decided that it was time to move. We were looking at the UK, US, other places, and it just wasn't really working very quickly mm. around that time my husband was asked to come to Nairobi and also to go to Sudan to help with a few agricultural projects and while he was stopped in Nairobi we were back in Bermuda he thought you know this is a great idea mm-hmm. right. so he was asked if he wanted to stay here long term of mm-hmm. course he said yes then he called us mm-hmm. <laughs> and then <laughs> said hey what do you think of Nairobi and yeah. so um you looked it up I looked it up. I yeah. googled it. Seemed great. They yeah. have dance. They have yoga. Yeah. They yeah. have everything I like. The yeah. people seem cool. Yeah. All right, we can move there. Right. Three months later, we're right. on our way here. How long right. ago was that? About a year and a half, maybe more. So, considering Barack Obama's been in uh, office for what? Uh, for yeah. yes, it's now fifth year. Fifth year, mm-hmm. exactly. Uh, what did you know about Kenya or Nairobi before you googled? I'd before like to hear I googled, some of these. Uh-huh. Huh, let me think about that. What did I know about Kenya? Um, before you googled. Some okay, of the things so you me, heard. I'm trying. I'm trying to think. Mm-hmm. Some of the things. I, I honestly, in Bermuda, we don't talk about Kenya much. Like, mm-hmm. There's not. There's not a. I wouldn't talk about Kenya much. There's yeah, not. But a, I mean, Barack Obama yeah. was in. I mean, that was the biggest story. The fact yeah, that he's half Kenyan. Definitely, that's the biggest story. Well, I'm not. Remind, remember, I'm not American. I'm yeah. Bermudian. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Um, you don't give a damn about Obama. We love Obama because yeah. he's the first black president. He yeah. looks like us. We're happy. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> so let me think. What did I know about Kenya? Yeah. Mm. There, uh, there are. Um, a bunch of Bermudians who have married Kenyans over the years. Ooh. And so, and all of those Kenyans are very educated. They're accountants, uh, they're doctors. Those are Lewis. No, 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 no. <laughs> accountants, know. accountants, yeah. no. Jungles, <laughs> jungles are, yeah, those jungles are, are what lawyers. We, what we call them, they're Luopian. Say it with me. <laughs> Don't why listen they, to him. Why are they don't listen. We're don't. black. Yes. 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 No, don't listen to him. Don't listen to him. <laughs> so, um, that was like, those people were my only reference of Kenyans. Yeah. So yeah. I see these people, they look different. Right. Um, than, than we do but you know yeah. they're obviously doing very well in Bermuda yeah. um, so that was basically my reference right. um, that's the only and that thing was, you knew about Nairobi that was the only thing of course I've heard about Maasai who hadn't heard about Maasai people yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, that sort of thing um, so some little of, some, bits some of, of history here and there but not much some of the myths you heard about the Maasai people I didn't hear any myths about the Maasai people it was people all true fact in, in Bermuda what have you heard about <laughs> Maasai men mm, can I say that on air oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> really? Really? No, no, no. I want to know what you've heard. Now, now I want to know now, what you've heard. Just, just, just so that we're clear, and then you know, because we've got a way of putting it on air. You know, just Kenya Pipeline Limited. 
yes. is responsible <laughs> for supplying the oil from the container depot in Mombasa right. to Nairobi. It's a lot of pipe. A lot of pipe. So is what you've heard about Maasai men, does it concern wink, wink, pipe? All I was asked to do was to... <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'll just say yes. <laughs> oh Lord, this conversation is just going downhill. All right, okay. <laughs> okay, let's talk a bit about what you did on um, on the TV show before we find out how you actually got the gig. First and foremost, how did you get the gig on Sakata? I think I was telling Kwacha. It was very yeah. random. Um, yeah. I went with a friend of mine to support her. Mm-hmm. She wanted to get her profile done at a talent agency, and I really thought I was wasting my time. But, you know, you go with a friend, you have fun. We caught him with a couple of matatus, went in, and we go into this place, and all you see is all these girls, and they're like size zero yeah. and with long weave and pounds yeah. of makeup, and we're there, and we're, yeah. we're dancers, we're artists, we're just dressed regularly. It's not really our style. Mm hmm. So we're there and then I was like, this is really not the place for us or what have you. But before we left, we left our details and so. So a few months later, the same company had called and I said, um, would you recon- would you consider doing a profile? At first I declined. And then my husband was like, why don't you go ahead and do it? You know, you have natural hair. Um, you know, you could promote that. African women <laughs> loving the hair again and all these things. So I kind of listened to him. And then I went and did the photo shoot and, and it was fun. And it wasn't anything what I thought. It wasn't any objectification. I'm very feminist, by the mm-hmm. way. Mm-hmm. And... Um, Soon after that, around that time, the producers from Citizen were looking for another female judge, and they happened to contact this agency, and they saw my photos. They had asked me to do some dance poses and things, like little things, and so they said, oh, well, maybe this is the type of person we're looking for. So right. they called me in for three different interviews. Right. They seemed to like me, sent me a contract, and I think two weeks later, we were just filming just right. like that. Right. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and your experience from Sakata? My experience, what part of it? So much. I mean, um, I mean do, do we do we actually have the talent? Was it or it was just was it just for the show? Can Kenyans actually dance? Kenyans can dance. Kenyans have a lot of talent. The majority of the people that came on Sakata, I don't. I'm pretty sure that most of them have not been um, professionally trained there were a few and it showed in in the last few rounds so if these guys and girls can do what they do without having any professional training i mean they would hit the ceiling and go even further than that with the right amount of exposure and equipment and support Mm -hmm. they really would so uh, question six i mean what is your background in 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 dancing okay so my background in dancing i started dancing kind of late for somebody who would have a professional dancing career i started dancing in my early teens Teens. Um, and for me, just like these girls in Sakata, um, dance was a, a means of expression, and a way to express my rebellion and to be free and just to be me mm-hmm. and that sort of thing. And um, it was, of course, my parents didn't have money to send me to dance lessons when I was young. That just didn't happen for most black kids at that time in the 80s. Now it's changing. So. I finally was was able to pay my own way and get dance training, and I trained in modern and also West African dance styles. Those are my two favorite. A little bit of ballet, but not much. And I, then I went to college, and when I went to college, um, I was teaching and also continuing to train. Um, I was trained um, by some people that I knew who went to Alvin Ailey. Then, after that, I had opportunities to teach dance in Egypt and as well as in Cyprus. Um, and then when we moved to Jerusalem is when I had the kids and stuff like that. So I took off for a while, but... Um, then after a few years now, I've been coming back and that sort of thing. Hmm. So, so mm-hmm. I mean, so right now you are still actually, you're an active dance teacher. No. And, um, you've, I um, haven't taught in years. I'm, you I'm, kind, years. I'm kind of retraining because after having two C-sections in 18 months, it's right. just kind of, wow. you lose a lot of flexibility, a lot of strength, a lot of that. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, but, mm-hmm. but now in Kenya, you've been, um, you started a new concept when it comes to education your teaching and uh, tell us a little bit about that. So um, in Kenya specifically, I haven't started the concept. The concept was started um, by the head teacher, Amy McKelvey. Yeah. But in Bermuda, we were, were starting to push this concept of art infused education. So um, it's basically giving kids a chance to be themselves in class and to learn in many different ways. Um, we know that everybody learns differently. Some of us learn through touch and learn through doing and talking, but in school we only learn through listening. Why yeah. is that? Yeah. It's like we're stuck in the dark ages. Yeah. So if you come to Woodland Star School, you'll right. see kids doing all sorts of things. Which like, is where, by the way? It's in Tigoni. It's right. on the Brackenhurst okay. property, even, right. even though it's not really attached to right. Brackenhurst. Right. Mm-hmm. What would basically 
basically be happening. Mm-hmm. It's uh, eight thirty in the morning. It's math. It's math. I was gonna yeah. go the same yeah. way. Yeah. I mean, how do you infuse <laughs> math with or uh, something artistic? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I should have yeah. had. I, I don't school. teach sure. math, and yeah. I should never teach someone math. Let me say that. So yeah. let me let me go with what I teach. That'll right. be easier. Right. So it's eight fifteen in the morning, right. and I teach poetry. Poetry is okay. a class. Yes. So um, right now the. Th- fourth graders are learning about limericks actually right. the first graders are as well so they're learning about they've been doing limericks yeah. and in science they've been learning about gemstones so right. what I've done is taken the gemstones and they have to write um, a limerick about the gemstone right. or and they've also been learning about similes and metaphors so right. now that they've gotten all that together midterm break is coming up and they're building mobiles that um, sort of display the pattern of the gemstones and having the poem hanging underneath it um, then we have social studies they're learning Native American history so we're singing Native American songs they can point to the map and show you where that tribal song comes from um, they're building teepees and totem poles and um, it's a lot of different type of learning um, it's things like that mm, mm, I've know, got to ask, yeah. Yeah, how uh, many because Angela's really thinking about this <laughs> how many Kenyan students are there in this class school I think it's, it's a very small school there are right. 20 kids or, right. or maybe less yeah. and uh, there's about I want to say 30% yeah. is Kenyan. Yeah. I'd mm-hmm. like to see a wow. lot more. Wow. You know, um, mm-hmm. a question, Lovin. You've been in Kenya for a while, and I'm sure you've heard the debate, you know, education mm-hmm. system, and, and, you know, they're trying to sort of revamp it because it doesn't seem to be working. Right. Do you think this kind of, you know, learning can actually benefit the 844 uh, vis-a-vis, you know, KC um, SC system? Not only would it benefit, it will really change the face of this country. I mean, when you have a situation where kids are only used to regurgitating information and you, you tell them something, they have to remember it and that's it. That's how kids learn and that's how we, they become as adults. If you give children a choice and allow them to expand the creative and the critical thinking, these are the types of people that don't put the tops on catch. These are the types of people that can say, you know what, I can come up with a new concept. I can come up with a new flavor, a new marketing, a new strategy. Mm-hmm. Um, Ivy League schools nowadays are not looking for just the scores. Mm-hmm. They're looking for someone who can come into the situation situation and, and really solve a problem creatively mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I think that in our schools we're lacking that creativity because we're only about the marks the marks do mean something mm-hmm. but they're not everything so with the creativity I mean these kids would really I mean Kenyans are known all over the world would even go further than that mm-hmm. and those kids who can't sit still in class they'd be able to learn through their kinesthetic learning but traditionally you know they do say that students who have this free sort of choice become you know, way too free, hard-headed, too opinionated, talk back to the parents. I mean, you know, you've seen kids who grew up in the States vis-a-vis kids who grew up here, you mm-hmm. know, very disciplined here. You only speak when you're spoken to. Do you feel, you know, this will re- this kind of learning can reassure Kenyan parents that the kids won't be running wild? Honestly, in the U.S., unless you have a niche school, they don't get the creative learning either. Mm. So on a large scale. So it, the respect is not about whether the kid is able to learn creatively. The respect is how the parents are raising them. Mm-hmm. So Kenyan parents can raise their kids with respect and with good values, pair that with creative learning. That's like the icing on the cake. Hang out with stars every evening. 21 questions on 96.3 Easy FM. 96.3 Easy FM 21 questions How were you as a student? How was I as a student? I was that creative one I, I tried so hard to be a good girl I think it changed when I became a teenager right. um, I always hated math I'm right. still not a math person So right. I was the one writing poetry right. In math right. and dancing around And doing things like that I was very shy by the way Okay mm-hmm. and, and speaking of the writing You're, you're a bestseller in Bermuda Yes uh, Tell us a little bit about that What did you write? So what are you I, a bestseller author for? I write I, Well the two books I've published Are children's literature right. And they're historical fiction The one right. that was the bestseller Is called The Lizard and the Rock And it's basically a fable Of Bermuda's discovery And um, it basically teaches kids That no matter what If you try you will succeed And then I wrote a sequel to that Which is called The Price this hog penny which is about generosity so um when those two books hit the shelves it was something different um people hadn't really seen local books of that quality and that sort of writing and it just went crazy and um it was congr- it was congratulated by the house of assembly um by the premier which is like our president mm-hmm. and um 
It did really, really well. Would you ever consider co- translating that book into Swahili? Um, in I, different languages? I am considering it. Right now I'm in the process. I'm just on the cusp of signing a contract for an e-book. Right. So once it becomes an e-book, then there's the possibility to translate into so many different languages, Ki Swahili being one of them. Mm-hmm. Right. So definitely. All right. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, you're, you're, you're married. Your husband's in agriculture. You've got two kids. Yes. And uh, you're a feminist. Very much. How does that work? Very easily. How? <laughs> a feminist is Because, just <laughs> you see, Kenyan women, when they become feminists... They repel men. Yes. There are different types of feminists. There right. are those who are like... Please burn, explain it to them. Who, explain like, to them. burn the bra, oh, men are evil, you know, I don't want anything to do with the man. And then there are those of us feminists yeah. who, who realize that feminism is simply uplifting the woman. That's right. It's simply giving the woman an equal footing. Right. So in some cases, pushing them ahead, ahead and right. recognizing right. the unique value that we bring to the situation. Right. And that it doesn't matter what your, your gender is, it, right. whether or not you can do something. It just mm-hmm. matters your ability. Right. So if he's better at cooking, right. he'll cook the food. If she's better at managing the money, she'll do that. It just depends right. on the ability. Right. And um, we don't put a gender on things. Okay, so mm-hmm. who's better at cooking in your house? Actually, I am. And that would be nurturing. And, and who's better at managing the money in your house? We both do that equally. I like that. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, 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 sure, I'm sure Quach wants to ask this question. So does, does your feminism entail, let's say, I mean, your husband asked you to wash his underwear. Would you say no as a feminist? This is against my rights. You have your that <laughs> Or would you actually do it as part of your nurturing sense? Um, if my Well, first of all, my, I have to be hypothetical because he wouldn't ask me to do that. Because he I, doesn't I, wear I, underwear. I, 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 no, because we, he would we have someone who has to yeah. 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 hang free. <laughs> Let it all out. (laughs) So, um, no, because we have help in the house. I would never have to do Mm, that. But um, I honestly don't think my husband would ever ask me to do that. But if he did... Um, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't go down the road of this is against my rights because if right. I needed him to wash my underwear, then yeah. I'm sure that he would say, "Sure, right. honey." So right. either way, um, right. I think it's an equal sharing, right. and if something needs to be done, right. you just go ahead and help out and where it, it needs to be. Yeah, I like that. Question seventeen. Um, we've just come off Valentine's Day, in fact. So what did uh, Mr. Man do for you for Valentine's? Day? <laughs> my birthday is two days before Valentine's Day, oh. so um, it yeah. was a long, long, Valentine's long week. Day. <laughs> it was a long it's been a long month we've been yes. celebrating <laughs> <laughs> so um, so does he do any uh, does he you know regularly do something special for you on Valentine's Day normally we do honestly this Valentine's Day we, we were both so busy yeah. and so we didn't even worry about it he gave yeah. me a mm-hmm. card I think right. I said I love you yeah. and that was <laughs> I like that I think <laughs> that I said I love you and I mean it would be 10 years yeah. that yeah. we've we'll been married wow. um, this right. May and before that we were together I don't know how long. So, <laughs> so how do you keep the spark alive? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, you know, you know, the modern people. You know, we got to ask. <laughs> I, you know what? I, I'm trying to figure that out now. But I think it's it's all about seasons and yeah. and. Um, Things come in waves. Sometimes I look at him like, you know, I'm really bored. And the other yeah. times I look at him like, wow, he's yeah. like so amazing. Yeah. So I guess it depends on the day and what's going on, the kids. I don't know, stress. Life happens. I like that. <laughs> Question 18. Now, of course, on Sakata season three, you're with Ian and Wyrie, mm-hmm. who are well-known Kenyan, uh, you know, artists. Yeah. But uh, so, of course, you listen to their music. Have you listened to their music? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, not what, Ian so much, but Wyrie. Well, yeah, yeah, Wyrie, of course. Now, um what else? I mean, what other Kenyan music would I, if I came to your house, would I find you listening to? I love Winyo's music. I right. love the Benga blue right. sort of right. style. Absolutely. She was just talking about it today. Gosh, yeah. he could, yeah. And his brother also has a band. They could sing right. for me. Right. Any time. Right. And so um, let me see who else. There's a lot of people I've been listening to. I, I like Kiddis' new song. Right. That's really cool. Right. Um, Octopizo is cool. I mostly yeah. like the Afrofusion type stuff. The right. stuff that you'll hear at um, Choices on a Thursday night. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's what I really like to listen to. Okay. Yeah. And, okay. Um, you know, considering you're teaching children, have you ever thought, uh, question 19, of opening a dance school, dance class for those mm-hmm. of us who love, you know, dancing, maybe it's also a way to lose weight, you know, for more African style dancing. Right. I've been asked that a lot. I haven't, like I said, I haven't taught dancing in years. I had some a surgery um, a few years ago that really, really set me back. So, but that's a good question. I might consider that more. I mm-hmm. might have to look into that more. But for now, um, what I've been doing is basically enjoying what's here and relearning and relearning my new body. So, yeah. I like that.
So question 20. So how does one, you, so you're not in the business of choreographing for videos, that kind of stuff, or is that, is that still too intense for you? Um, Music videos. I haven't been asked yet, yeah, actually, yeah, and I also yeah. sing, yeah. so I oh, could, I well. could do that. I just don't know who, right. basically. No, they I, would I, now get in touch I'm with you. I'm just not worried. You know, yeah. you can. He's yeah. so yeah. busy. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Yeah, okay. but how does how does one get in touch with you though? Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I'm on Facebook. Right. I'm on Twitter. I right. mean. Call you me. always. Yeah. I see that. I yeah. see that. No, yeah. you know, so, Caribbeans are well known for winding their waists. Mm. Oh yes, and, oh, and yes. really breaking it down on the dance floor. Did you really realistically have to get those dance lessons, or can you throw down even without the dance lessons? I've never had training in dance hall. Matter of fact, I've never even considered. It's just something you do. It's or oh, so good. It's just you just do it. You mm-hmm. just it's just you're it's part of you. You're there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. just. just part of you there are people that train in and i've seen that and i wouldn't mind getting further training in it but mm-hmm. i just never considered it yeah there's this uh dance hall group uh called uh what are those guys who came to kenya that day um um oops i know i totally forgot yes. <laughs> there was a dance hall group a duo one with i think uh, beach blonde yes, hair yes, 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 who yes, came yes, yes. uh to nairobi and there was a big scandal around it because they sort of had uh, you know very perverse styles of dancing mm-hmm. on stage with uh, the kenyan women is this something and i believe you know it's probably part of you know the caribbean culture is this something that regularly happens in the caribbean well mind you i'm i'm of um, caribbean descent but mm-hmm. in bermuda we're actually not in the caribbean but yeah. most of us i mean all of us i have yeah. trinidadi and yeah. saint Catitian yeah. and whatever yeah. um my grandparents and things but yes it's different it's very different like i know when i go out to the club and i'm dancing i'm winding my way somebody's getting the wrong message i thinking, oh hey yeah. you know yeah. give yeah, me a call uh-huh. but for us it's just it's dance we leave it on the dance floor if you want it's something else that's the whole another situation but so i think it's interpreted very differently matter of fact i've actually teased why ray that his music videos are so like mutual <laughs> yeah. uh, like right. yeah. <laughs> they're not yeah. it's not real dance it's not real, like, i agree yeah. like, yeah. yeah. the chicks yeah. need yeah. to get to the ground yeah. like yeah, yeah. you know what's up. yeah, yeah. So, that's what's up. but yeah. i realized that in kenya like that's enough when he's exactly. like people yeah. would just be like switch the channel that exactly. can't go on air yeah. you yeah. know we're yeah. conservative yeah. we're not we're not yeah. as free-spirited as yeah. so which is funny because we always think that we got it from africa so we're like and i get here oh, no, like, we maybe one this country <laughs> we're doing the missionaries just thought us out to be a bit more oh, conservative. oh i see i see yeah, that's I'm, what happened <laughs> i'm coming back to the motherland i'm saying hold up <laughs> I, I love it i love it so you're singing as well are you are you getting in studio? Am I getting a studio? I'm not oh, you're ready getting in studio. into studio. Um, not yet. Once again, it seems to be working very slowly. I'm trying to see how I can work it in Kenya and that sort of thing. Um, what kind but, of music would, would you be yeah. doing? Uh, I'm versatile. I can do operatic, R and B, dance hall. I can wow. do a lot. Can wow. you give us a little taste? Seriously? Oh yeah. I don't know. What should I sing? Now I'm on the spot. Hmm. You'll never find no one in this lifetime to love you like I do. So never mind things that people say, girl, never hurt you. <laughs> that was good. That I was like awesome. it. I like it. So, <laughs> would, would you think of getting the studio like with Y Ray? Have you oh, guys discussed awesome. it? Yeah. Um, we, no, we've talked about you could it. Be our yeah. new Kenyan, you know, dance old diva because exactly. we don't have one. Yeah. We've talked about it. Um, we just haven't pursued it yet. So we'll see what happens. I love that. Yeah. Sure. I love yes. that. So how, how does one get in touch with you then? You said the Facebook and Do you Twitter. have an email address? Yeah. I have an email. Yeah. Should I give it out? Yep. Okay. So um, my email is just my full name, right. Joanne Ball Burgess at gmail.com. Right. So right. J-O-A-N-N-E-B-A-L, like the football, mm-hmm. B-U-R-G-E-S-S at gmail. Right. So um, yeah, maybe you can put it on the page or something like that if you want. So, or, or um, Facebook. I've liked your page, by the way, the Easy FM page. All right, so. very good, very <laughs> good. And fa- Facebook? Facebook is my full name, Joanne Ball Burgess. Um, they can also find me on the Sakata dance page. I used to comment on there regularly. It was funny seeing all the bad comments. You know, we hate that girl, whatever. Mm. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, those are the ones that make you. Yeah, it's like, yeah, you. anti-fans. Mm-hmm. So, um yeah, they can find me there. And then I'm also on Twitter at Joanne underscore in underscore Kenya. So, yeah. So, Joanne. Here we go. Thank you so very much for coming on 21 Questions, my dear. You're most welcome. Thank and you uh, of course, me. as you can tell, if you're like Angela and you're looking for that coach to do those lessons, 
whether it is the the physical or the vocal as well. Joanne is there, and I love the, I love the, what the school is doing as well. What's the school called? The school is called Woodland Star. They also have a Facebook page and they're online as well. And it's just a day school, isn't it? Yeah. Just okay. a day school. Out in Tagoni. Mm-hmm. For kids how old? Um, Between? They start at age four and they go up to age 12. So um, that's good. basically primary, primary school. Primary to eh? middle. Right. Yeah. Thank you so very much for coming on 21 Questions, my dear. Most welcome. Hang out with stars every evening. 21 Questions on 96.3 Easy FM.